All right, I hope everybody's having a great day. We start this episode by talking about some of the most important people in the dog game history from the past and the present. The dog woman. Now just to name a few like I'm gonna do is kind of a discredit to all the women across the world. Cause truthfully, every dog man with a woman or girl, she goes through just as much if she's not taking care of the dogs more than he is. After doing some research, I learned how Mr. J.P. Colby's wife maintained the bloodline and kept it going while her sons were fighting in World War II and Mr. J.P. had died, and she kept the blood going. Not only that, Mr. Don, Mr. Don Mayfield's wife, Phyllis Mayfield, from what I read, she practically took care of dogs better than Mr. Don did. And as I was doing my research, it led me to Miss Pat Carver, Mr. Maurice Carver's wife, who they said kept all the records, and she did reputable breedings herself. That's in a lot of people's pedigrees today. Just as Miss Patsy LaPosse, they say after her husband died, she continued breeding and breeding and breeding the dogs. And being straight from South Carolina, you know I gotta represent my girl, the Carolina kitten, Miss Katie Marlowe. But just calling out these few women, like I said, it's just a discredit to all the women across the world that's behind they dog, man, because behind every good man is a woman, you know what I'm saying? And I doubt very seriously, half of the real dogs that we see in the pedigrees, you know, half of them probably was taken care of by women, you know what I'm saying? All the grand champions, all the champions, you know, all the ones on the rum list, I'm quite sure all the wives and the girlfriends were doing half the work. And big thanks to the women who don't like dogs, period, but they tolerate it for their man. Now I know y'all fellas can agree with me when I say this. All my dog men, I know y'all can agree with me when I say this. A woman can wear anything. She can put on all kind of enticing clothes. She can wear all kind of makeup. She can do all kind of stuff to us, you know, to her skin, to her body ass stuff, but it's just something about a woman that loves a bulldog. It's something about a woman that loves a bulldog that none of that stuff right there can compare to. Let's get it. everybody having a great day subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet appreciate the ones that did share it with your friends hit the like button at the bottom hog dog news for the day all right before i get started i want to say if you want to talk about bullies go to d slim the og and subscribe to his page he talking about bullies you want to talk about american bulldogs go to pride of the south page subscribe to his page he talk about american bulldogs and you know i'm talking about the um, American Pitbull Terriers. So, tune in. And my condolences to D. Slim, the OG, lost his mother. And you know how that, nobody can, you know, you know understand how that feel unless they lost a mother. So, my condolences, I haven't lost mine. My condolences to you, brother. Now, back to Master of Bulldogs. Today's video is going to be over the self-proclaimed legend, the master of all Bulldogs. Um, he decided to come on my channel leave a negative comment. I do want my channel and everyone that comes to my channel to have a positive experience. I'm not trying to uh, just dwell on the negativity, but <clears throat> he's got 17,000 subscribers. I'm a little over 1,000 now. He decided to come over here and call me a liar and I don't appreciate that. So upon him calling me a liar, tried to call him. Um, he babbled on, wouldn't let me get a word in. I heard something about him having sexual inter intercourse with a gorilla. You smoke crack, don't you? You smoke crack, don't you? Look at me, boy. Don't you smoke crack? The conversation was short, and uh, it did get a little weird in that short amount of time. So I don't know what he was talking about with him and a gorilla, but... Uh, Anyways, he hung up on me, and then he decided to text me from another number. 
and call me a liar. Then he was making videos today, making threats, saying that, you know, if I'm going to continue to lie to people, I can get touched. I mean, come on, dude. You're in South Carolina. I'm in Tennessee. So I want to make this video as short as possible, and I want to challenge the master of all bulldogs. Now we see that he got a tendency to like picking on guys with less subscribers than him. He got the big 16,000. You know what I'm saying? And he picking on guys with three, four, five, six, seven hundred, eight hundred, nine hundred subscribers. Like, that don't even add up, do it. Like, if you the big dog on the block, you making all the money on the block, you selling bricks, you selling kilos. Like, what are you picking at the dude out there selling eight bones? <laughs> that don't add up, you know what I'm saying? Obviously, you ain't selling them bricks you talking about. Obviously, you ain't big time on Wall Street. Obviously, you ain't doing the numbers you claim. You know what I'm saying? Because you keep messing with the little guys, <laughs> so you say. And hey, it is what it is. Pelican Bay K9s, man. The first thing I want to say before I get started is if anybody can get me in touch with Warrior Kennels, Art of War Kennels, or Mr. W. Perry, tell them to inbox me. Hit me up in my inbox. I needed to holler at him about a few things or whatever. Now let's get into this program. And master of all bulldogs, man. I understand how this YouTube thing go. You know what I'm saying? Being a YouTube myself, I know how the YouTube thing go and I know what's what with it. And you was better off just, you know what I'm saying? If you wanted to be like, you know, like, you know, like a YouTube critic or some type of thing, you should have just better off not involving your dogs with it. Just you know what I'm saying? Just not letting us see no dogs and you just come at everybody the way you're coming at everybody. Different people. You know what I'm saying? You should have did it like that. And just don't even try to involve yourself with the dogs. You know what I'm saying? Just come at boom, boom. Come at people. Come at people. Because you're coming at everybody but, you know what I'm saying? Your system is not perfect. So that's what that's what the conflict is coming in at. Like, the amount of people that you are coming at, like your kennel got to be made of gold and your dogs got to be made of gold shit now. Gold shit nuggets. You know what I'm saying? For all the people that you coming at. Does it. <laughs> See, this company that he's a -C -A. calling ACA, a American Canine the Association. ACA does it also. They have the same name they as me. The you know? But I'm an LLC, a smaller company uh, from my state or whatever. But anyway, he's trying to get at me right here. You know what I'm saying? He looking stuff up. That's None of that stuff is me. I don't even have a website for my registry company, for one. You know what I'm saying? I don't have a website at all. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you about my dog registry company. So, I'm going to give you some content, uh, Master of uh, Bulldogs. I don't have a website for my dog registry. So, make something up about that so you, you know what I'm saying? So, you have some content or something to talk about. And like I always tell you, big dog, show us something that you put in the system. Show us a mark that you made. These dogs that I'm showing behind you now, these are sons of Sambo and Sambo great grandkids. You know what I'm saying? Great grandkids. Dogs that's out here somewhere in the country. You know what I'm saying? I don't know where they're at. They're out here somewhere in the country, but they coming down off of Grand Champion Sambo. You know what I'm saying? Coming down off that stuff. And when you look at your pedigree, ADBA registered, because Sambo was ADBA registered, so y'all shouldn't have no bona fide papers. When you look at your papers and you see Sambo in your pedigree, that was me. You know what I'm saying? That dog was the truth. You know what I'm saying? Your pedigree. And I say this not to dis not to discredit any of fatty puppies or toe jam puppies. But I always said and I said to the end, Sambo was the best thing that came off of crossroad kennels outside of fatty. You know what I'm saying? Fatty made Sambo. You know what I'm saying? That was the best thing fatty ever made. Fatty made some good dogs, you know what I'm saying? I'm not going to knock nothing over everybody else's dogs, like I said. You know what I'm saying? Fatty got dogs across the country. But, if some, some guys who were already more seasoned in the game would have got a sample at that time, you would have did a whole lot of stuff with them probably. I want to ask some of you older guys. I, I'm 42, so you have to be older than that, you know what I'm saying? Older than me. I want to ask you, like, what did the purple ribbon mean? Like, the dog wasn't directly off of Jenny Boots that I had, but this was like the mid-90s, and I looked in the pedigree, and I seen Jenny Boots on the pedigree. I didn't really know who Jenny Boots was then, but I remember the name Jenny Boots. So what I want to know is, what do the Purple River mean? Like, once I start messing with dogs later on down the line, Purple River, like I said before my last video, Purple River meant the show stuff. 
But for some reason, I'm getting a different, you know, a different outlook on this because the dogs want to show dogs that, you know, that this purple ribbon was in the pedigree of. Maybe the purple ribbon was best of show or dog of the year or I don't know. Like, if you were older than me and you know what the purple ribbon meant in the pedigree back then, or, you know, I know I had the dog and the dog said Jimmy Boots. You know what I'm saying? If it was another Jimmy Boots, then it could have been another Jimmy Boots. But this 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 pedigree said Jimmy Boots, and and I know it had purple ribbon in the, some of the dogs in the background. Not saying it was on Jimmy Boots, but some of the dogs said purple ribbon, or the paper said purple ribbon. It was something with purple ribbon. And if you know what I'm talking about, just tell me, you know what I'm saying, what's going on with that, with that particular set of papers. Another thing, most older guys know it, but how to tell if your dog dehydrated or got enough water or not. Some people do it from the front. Some people do it from the back. You know. Everybody had their own preference. Lift the dog back end up, just on the tail end, just lift his skin up, let it go. Count the seconds it takes to flatten out. Count the amount of seconds it takes to flatten out. That's what you call a count. You know, the dog should, should go straight down and flatten out. If it goes down and just takes a little couple seconds for the skin to actually flattens out, then that dog has a, either one, two, or three count or whatever, and you might need to get him some more water. Some people do it from behind the neck and let it go. I, I really do it at the end, on the tail end, you know what I'm saying, myself. But not saying that's the right way or the wrong way, but, you know, it's either the neck end or the tail end. But that's one way you can tell if your dog got too much water in it or not enough water in it. And a lot of the stuff that I'm telling you about these dogs can be done with any dog, no matter what the breed is. You know what I'm saying? Not just pit bulls. So if I'm talking about my Belgian model wild on a particular video, just pay attention to it because you might can use some of them tips for your pit bull. You know what I'm saying? All right. Next thing. Next thing I want to talk about is, and this is opinions for everybody. Everybody had their own opinions about everything, no matter what it is. All right. Condition your own hound or send it off. You know what I'm saying? What's the better results? My opinion. You know, I always say my opinion. My opinion, that bond you get when you... Uh, getting your dog for a confirmation show, getting your dog ready for a hog hunt, or whatever you're getting your dog ready for, that bond that you create with that dog is that same bond that I always talk about. That same bond that you have when you treat that dog like a pet. You know what I'm saying? That's what I mean by treating the dog like a pet. Like It's more than just leaving the dog on the chain and, and, and thinking you're going to have a top-notch, you know what I'm saying, hog dog. You know what I'm saying? It's more than that. You know what I'm saying? Because... You got people like me, you know what I'm saying, who going to take a whole lot more time up with my dog. You know what I'm saying? A whole lot more time up. And if you're thinking you're going to be able to out-hunt that person because of a shot, because of a treadmill, because of a, a weight you pull, or because of a book you read, then it ain't going to go. You know what I'm saying? It ain't going to happen like that. You know what I'm saying? Because that bond, you know, a dog can read your eyes like I told you before. The moment that dog sees that you're scared of that hog, the moment that dog sees that you're ready to get up out of there, it, it probably won't be five minutes and he's going to get up out of there. You know what I'm saying? He can read your emotions. Even with the model wise and I'm doing my training and stuff, when I get mad or if I do something, they, they look, they read your emotions. You know what I'm saying? They, can, they, 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 they look dead in your eyes. You know what I'm saying? The pits do the same exact thing. They look in your eyes and they read your emotions. So when you go to hog hunt, it got to be game time. You know what I'm saying? You got to have that game face on, that look in your eyes, like I tell you, like Kobe Bryant, like Michael Jordan, like Mike Tyson, like all them boys. When they come, when they come, you can look and you can tell when they got their game face on and you can tell when somebody coming to that ring and they looking nervous. You know what I'm saying? When them boys come in and they got their game face on, that's that face you got to have because that dog see that and that bond with them. When you got that bond with them, that's what's going to matter at the end of the day. These little Joes here, these my little babies right here. I got nine of them. You know what I'm saying? Belgian Malawai puppies, AKC registered. You know? And like I say, master of all bulldogs, man. I'd be a hypocrite if I wasn't showing you my dogs, you know? And I'm asking you to see your dogs. So that's why I'm showing you my stuff, you know? Different things that I got. I got some pit bulls and I got other stuff that I'm showing you. You know what I'm saying? But I'm just showing you what I got right now. You know, even you might be interested in the Malawai brother. Purebred, AKC registered.